Hey everybody, I learned something new today and whenever I learn something new you better believe I'm going to be telling everybody else about it too. And so today we are going to talk about what the word anoxic really means to us here in the aquarium hobby because I found that what industry you're in is going to make a difference on how you deal with the words anoxic and anaerobic. They get thrown around a lot in the aquarium hobby. There's a lot of confusion about those two words and up until this morning I was even confused about those words even though I did not realize I was confused. So my simple definition between the difference between what is anaerobic and what is anoxic is accurate but it's a very simplified version and it's the version that a molecular biologist would use and so we'll talk about that briefly and get it out of the way but we are not molecular biologists we are fish keepers and fish keepers are water keepers and water keepers have more in common with waste water treatment facilities than they do with molecular biologists and when you get into the waste water treatment industry the words anoxic and anaerobic have very different meanings and that applies applies very much to what we're doing. So that's what we're going to discuss in depth. But briefly, to get out of the way with the simplified version of the difference between anaerobic and anoxic, if you're a molecular biologist, is anaerobic describes the organism or the process by which an organism derives its energy, whereas anoxic would be the environment that it's in. In other words, you would have anoxic conditions but then you would have anaerobic bacteria that lived in those anoxic conditions. And that's as simple as it is. It's a matter of one is a term about the conditions and the other is a term used to apply to the organisms that live in that conditions. And again, that's a very simplified version. It's accurate, but it doesn't really apply wholly to us. What does apply to us is the wastewater industry. And in the wastewater industry, Anaerobic water would be water that, or an anaerobic condition, would be a condition that has no free oxygen, and the word free is important there. An anoxic condition would be a condition that has no free oxygen, but may contain bound oxygen, or does contain bound oxygen, and that oxygen is bound in the form of nitrite and nitrate. And the big problem they have in the wastewater industry is when they're done with all of the wastewater and they're down to basically the effluent that's going to go back into the environment, that is usually very nitrate and nitrite rich, and they can't just dump that back into the environment. And so they need to remove all that nitrogen and those nitrogen compounds, get that nitrate out of that water, and the way they do that is by running it through an anoxic reactor. And what an anoxic reaction is, is a type of bacteria that is not exactly an anaerobic bacteria. An anaerobic bacteria derives its energy without using any oxygen at all. It uses uh, sulfur compounds usually to derive its energy and the presence of oxygen is toxic to a true anaerobic bacteria. An anoxic bacteria is a bacteria that will not use free oxygen necessarily, but it still needs the oxygen for its respiration process. It still needs to oxidize for its energy and it still needs that oxygen. But where it gets that oxygen is from the nitrate and the nitrite. There's a chemical reaction, it breaks the oxygens away. Nitrate has two oxygens and nitrate has three oxygens. And so it takes those oxygens, it can use those for its oxidation process, and then it releases the nitrate nitrate or it releases the nitrogen as free nitrogen gas uh, which off gas is out of the water and so this is how a an anoxic reactor works in a wastewater facility. This is exactly the kind of thing we try to set up or what we talk about when we're talking about these deep substrates and the plenums and how to move the water through them and so on and so forth. And I learned more reading one article about wastewater treatment this morning than I have about all the stuff I've read in the aquarium hobby about how all this stuff works. And so in one of these anoxic reactors, there's a trick to having a holding pond and a stilling pond, and they actually deliberately get the oxygen, the free oxygen, out of the water, but the water can't be stagnant. They still have to move the water through the reactor. They basically still have to run it through the filter media or the biomedia, 
but they have to make sure the oxygen is out of it before they move it through the bio media. And so it goes through a series of, you know, calming, stilling areas where the water is stagnant and the oxygen is, you know, released from it and so on and so forth. And so by this process, this anoxic process, they actually denitrify the water and the water that comes out the other end is just pure water. It doesn't have the nitrate or the, or it's greatly reduced. I don't know if it takes it out completely. Again, it depends on what their goals are and so on and so forth. But that's how the anoxic reaction works. So what we have in our aquarium in our, the upper portion of our filter, the, the typical nitrate, uh, the, nit the nitrogen cycle part of it that we think about the first part of the nitrogen cycle, uh, where the ammonia is being converted into nitrite and nitrite is then being converted into nitrate. That all uses aerobic oxygen or aerobic bacteria. It's bacteria that's using free oxygen out of the water. And in fact, it's actually taking that oxygen and it's adding it to, it's, it's oxidizing the ammonia. And that's why when you add the oxygen to it, that ammonia becomes nitrite. And then when another species of bacteria gets a hold of that, it adds another oxygen to it and makes it into nitrate. And so now it has three oxygens on it. And so when we get to the other end of that, those oxygens are removed again, used by the anoxic bacteria that still does use that oxygen. It just doesn't get free oxygen. It's taking that oxygen back off of the nitrate and it's just leaving the free nitrogen left over when it's done. And that is done every day in wastewater facilities and in these anoxic reactors all the time. And it can be done in a fish tank. Again, I'm not going to get into talking about the deep substrate and what I'm doing and how I did it and so on and so forth. But reading into that and learning about that was sort of an eye opener for me as far as learning about the difference between the definitions in our hobby when we're talking about the difference between aerobic and anaerobic and so on and so forth. So it doesn't really change a whole lot necessarily, but it's the terminology and if we're all on the same page and we all use the same definition and we all have the same understanding of what those terminologies mean, it makes communication a lot easier. So from now on, when I talk about these types of things, I will definitely be keeping this in mind. And I understand that there's far more uh, difference between simply, you know, one describes the condition versus one describes the uh, organism. Uh, good, a similar example to that would be when people talk about brackish fish. Brackish describes the environment. It's brackish water. The fish are urihaline. So urihaline would describe the animal and then brackish describes the condition that that animal lives in. And so again, if you're a molecular biologist, anaerobic would be the organism or the process by which the organism gets its energy and anoxic would be the condition. But that that doesn't really apply in our circumstances. So let me know what you think about all that. Did you know all that? Was that something that was new to you? Does that clear things up? Does it make it more complicated? A lot of times I have a tendency to make things more confusing when I try to clear them up. Uh, hopefully I did not do that today. I think I got through that pretty uh, cut and dry and straightforward. So let me know what you think. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments and whether or not you'll be changing the way you think about it, talk about it, maybe adjust the way you run your substrate or whatever. Again, this is, this is something I'm going to think about now because I've done some experiments with deep sand beds and I've always come up with nothing and I can certainly understand why I've come up with nothing and I've always been confused about having water flow moving through there and if you're pulling water through it you must be pulling oxygen through it and so on and so forth and that's why there's a difference between just a simple deep substrate versus a deep substrate that's in a plenum in a separate environment where the water can be stilled and the oxygen removed and so on and so forth so it can work, it's just you got to understand the full process of what's really going on. And I learned a lot about that today by reading some articles about the wastewater industry. So there you go. You never know where you're going to find good, valuable information. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Don't forget I do a live stream every Friday night and Sunday night. You don't want to miss either one of those. So thanks for watching this one. I'll see you real soon in the next one.